Hello. The message of enthronement we are about to watch is a message preached by my amiable wife, Pastor Mrs. Former AZ. You know, the word of God says, day unto day, utter a speech, and night after night, reveal it knowledge. The entrance of God's word give it light and a supply it understanding to the simple. I believe as you view and as you watch, the word of God will penetrate your heart and give you inheritance among the sanctified. Please stay tuned, watch from your heart, and one word anointed by God will change your life forever. Happy viewing. Luke chapter 14, verse 28. I assume everyone is there already, right? All right, let's shoot. Verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. That will never be your story in the name of Jesus. I said that will never be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout they believe us. Amen. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. The Bible says the labor of the foolish weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Let's take it one more time. The labor of the foolish weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. All right, let's sit down tight as we hear God's word this morning. Are you ready to take this ride? Are you ready? This morning I bring you God's word titled Strategic Moves Necessary to Excel in the New Year. Strategic Moves necessary to excel in the new year strategic moves necessary to excel in the new year praise the lord the bible says that which man or woman as the case may be will want to build the tower and will not sit down and count the cost first and analyze and evaluate and assess if he or she is able to build the tower. You see, as the year comes to an end and as a new year begins to start, we see many things, uh, many people do this and they begin to write down big dreams and big visions and, and things they intend to achieve and things they intend to do in the upcoming year. Many set out to build different kinds of towers. Like Papa would say, in the different spheres, in the seven mountains. And then you are making up your mind to build this tower. The question is this. Is it okay to have a dream of building a tower? But the question is this. Would you be able to start and finish? He said, if you are a man, if you are a woman and you want to build a tower, the first thing you must do is that you must sit down first and do what? And count the cost. Whether you are capable to finish it. Whether you have sufficient to execute that dream or vision. He said you must sit down and count the cost. So that you will not have a condition whereby you have laid the foundation and then you are not able to finish it. The shame does not end with you. The, 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 the disappointment does not end with you. Because the Bible says that people will begin to pass and they will begin to mock the person. And say, see this man or this woman began to build and could not finish it. He began to build and could not finish it. He started this dream and could not bring it to actualization. She started this vision and could not properly execute it. What would cause such a situation? Because the person did not do what? Sit down to count the cost and to know if he or she has what? Sufficient to be able to finish it. That's why I'm speaking to you this morning on strategic moves necessary to excel in the new year. As the new year approaches, everyone will say, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. But the question is this, how many years, how, how many people eventually enjoy that happiness in the new year? Because your happiness will be dependent on the strategy you put in place. 
Strategy is better than energy. Your move determines your reach in life. Your move determines what? Your reach in life. The move you make. When you see somebody stepping out on, the, on, 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 a, on a field and they're about to run, the way the person runs will determine how the person will do it, will finish. Failure is nothing more than a chance to revise your strategy. If you have failed, it is just an opportunity, not a personality. It is an opportunity for you to do what? To revise your strategy, to change your strategy. Papa would always tell us that it is only a stupid person that will do the same thing over and over and over again and expect a different result. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect what? A different result. Can I tell you? Many people say, oh, that guy is lucky. Oh, that lady is lucky. Oh, that one is lucky. But can I tell you that you can make your own luck by having good strategy and good preparation. You can have what? Your own luck by doing what? Having what? Good strategy and good preparation. So I'll be showing you strategic moves that you need to make very, very necessary in order to excel in the coming year. If you carry out any of these ones and you're able to finish, fulfill them, I believe God that you'll be able to, you have an excellent year. You will enjoy your year in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a better amen. Number one move you need to make is to develop a stronger relationship with God. Develop what? Develop a stronger relationship with God. Relationship with God is everything. In the book of James chapter 4 verse 8, the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh unto you. Many want God to draw nigh unto them, but they're not willing to draw nigh unto God. When we talk about nigh, don't mind King James. It means draw near. In 2020, in the coming year, you must endeavor to do what? To develop a stronger relationship with God. Why I use the word stronger is because it is possible that your relationship with God is already strong. But you need to do what? Make it what? Stronger. Make it better. Make it deeper. Somebody shout hallelujah. Draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hearts, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That's the scripture. Draw near unto God in this coming year. This year, I know you, you came around, you worshipped God, but in the coming year, resolve to draw nearer to God. Why would, am I giving you this advice? John chapter 15 verse 5 says that he is the vine and we are the branches and without him, we can do nothing. There is a limit you would always reach and stop if you are not connected to God. There is a place you will never reach until you are connected to your maker. Papa would always tell us that the source of a thing is the sustainer of that thing. If you want to go far, you cannot make it without God. There is no way you can achieve that dream without God. There is no way you can achieve that vision without God. There is no way you can excel in the coming year without God. John chapter 3 verse 27. He said a man cannot receive anything except it be given to him from above. And if above does not give to you, abroad will not remember you. If above blocks the heavens, no matter how abroad likes you, they will not release anything. But if above approves it, abroad will release it. No man can receive anything except it be given to him from above. It is God that will determine your enlargement. It is God that will determine your expansion. It is God that will determine your next level. What do you have to do? Develop a stronger relationship with God. The days of hanky-panky with God is over. Like people will humorously say, the days of minus Satan plus Jesus should be over. You have to develop a relationship that is tangible. God hates people who use him as spare tires. There are many Christians, the only time you remember to call upon God is when you have an issue. 
when you have a problem, when you have a challenge. But God is not interested in people who come to him only when they have issues. God is not a spare tire. He should be your one and only. He should be the, your mainstay. Draw closer to God. Draw nearer to God in this coming year. Because honestly, if you claim you are too busy, I don't have time for God. It's because you don't love God enough. Anything you love, you make time for. Did somebody hear me? Anything you, you make time for. Anything you love, you make time for. If you love God, you make time for God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you want to draw closer to God? How can you have this closer relationship with God? I show you three ways. A, your worship life. When we talk about your worship life, I do not mean slow songs. When we say worship God, many people say, oh, this is a worship song because it's what? A slow song. It's not about the, uh, the, the speed of the song. It's about the relationship we have with God. Develop a stronger relationship with God. How can you do that? Improve on your worship life. Learn to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. The songwriter said, oh, worship the king in the beauty of his holiness. When you worship him, what do you do? You realize who he is. You realize what he is. And you realize how useless you are without him. When you come to that point, when you know that you can do nothing without him, you are truly worshiping. When you come to that point, when you understand that he's the reason for your being, you will worship him. When you understand that you are just but a vapor, yet he is so mindful of you, you will worship him. The psalmist came to a point where he said, who is man that you are so mindful of him? Who is the son of man that you look to his affairs? A God as great as you are. You began before the beginning began. Yet, you are so mindful of my welfare. I call upon you, you answer. I cry, you hear. You worship him. The worship is not in the voice. The worship is not in the instrument. The worship is not in the environment. It is a function of the relationship you have with your maker. When you worship him, you avoid many worships on earth. When you worship him, you escape the calamity that comes from worships on earth. Worship God. You don't need to wait for the instrument to worship him. You don't need to wait for the song leader to worship him. You don't need to wait for that music on your tape to worship him. You worship him because you know who he is. How do you know who he is? By first realizing who you are. Ask yourself, who are you? Where are you coming from? Who created you? After now, when you die, where are you going to? It will help you to worship him. It will help you to remember who he, you are. And help you to appreciate who he is. The one who created the entire universe. The Bible said he is seated in heaven. And makes the world his full stool. The one who carries the weight of the world upon his shoulders. When you worship him. You come to that point where you realize that you are nothing without him. Only someone who thinks can worship. If you don't worship God, you don't think well. Because if you remember, you are nothing. Huh? You started, you, you have a date. Date of production. And date of expiry. Many have expired this 2019. But you are still here. Worship the one who never expires. Worship the one who does not have a, a date of production. He began before the beginning began. The 
the one who uses the basket to fetch water in order to mess up the bas a bucket. I come to that point where I call him Ujigwa Tatu. Because he's the one who uses iron as chewing stick. He is greater than your imagination. Bigger than your philosophies. He is not your age mate. He is the ancient of days. Who knows tomorrow? When you come to that point, you worship him. The worship is not in the sweetness of the voice. You may not even need to sing. You can worship by talking to him. You can worship even by your lifestyle. Number two, under that stronger relationship is that you must work on your prayer life. Without prayer, you remain a prey to the devil. Without prayer, there is no communication with God. Without prayer, your life will just be in a situation where it is, you, you, are, in, you, are, you are in a risky situation. Pray. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray at night. There is no specific prayer time. Papa has taught us about the mystery of speaking in tongues. While you are walking, you are praying. While you are walk at your job, uh, workplace, you are praying. While you are on the street, you are praying. While you are driving, you are praying. Pray without season. That's what the Bible tells us. Do you want to develop a stronger relationship with God? I'm showing you the way. Worship God. Then develop what? Your prayer life. The next one is your study life. Study to show yourself approved. 2 Timothy 2.15 a workman that did not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Many are dividing, but they are dividing wrongly. Many are ashamed because they, don't not, they do not know the word of God. Many have been confused because they do not know what God is saying. Study. Study the word of God. Papa has this undying, unquenchable habit. Studying 10 chapters of scripture every day. If he is done, he goes back to the beginning. If he is done, he goes back to the beginning. And you know what? Every day he sees something new in the scripture. Because the word of God is new every morning. New every morning. God always has something to say. Worship God. Improve your prayer life. Improve your study life. Because can I tell you, worship is relationship with God. Prayer is communication with God. And study is knowledge about God. Let me say it again. Worship is relationship with God. Prayer is communication with God. And study is what? Knowledge about God. Work on your relationship. Communicate with him and know him more. The Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 that they that know their God shall be strong and do what? Exploit. There is no way you excel in the coming year if you don't know your God. The knowledge of God you know will determine the volume of exploits you make. The knowledge of God you know will determine what? The volume of exploits you make. Number two. Discover and work on your vision. Number one is develop what? A stronger relationship with God. Number two is what? Discover and work on your vision, purpose, and divine assignment. Discover. Work on. When the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. If I do not know the purpose of this microphone, I will use it to go to my kitchen and begin to pan pepper with this head. Why? Because I do not know the purpose of the microphone. When Saul did not know his purpose as king, he was busy chasing donkeys here and there because he did not know what his purpose was. Who are you? 
Who were you called to be on earth? What vision has God given to you? What is your life assignment? If you must excel in the coming year, these are questions you have to settle this year. Why are you here on earth? Everyone who has come here on earth has come here with a vision, with a purpose, with an assignment. If you have not discovered yours, you are missing out on the good things of life. Discover. And after you have discovered, work on it. Because it is not everybody who, have, who discovered actually working on it. Many discover their vision, but they are not working on their vision. Many have discovered their purpose and they are not working on their purpose. You are not fit to live until you live for a thing. You are not fit to live until you live for a thing. What are you living for? Why are you here on earth? Do you think you came here to occupy space? Are you matter? Did you think you came here to populate the earth? We are already populated. That vision that God had, I said replenish and populate the earth. We are already populated. Overpopulated. Some countries are now cutting down on the number of children people should have. Why? Because our earth is already too populated. And the resources on ground is not sufficient for everyone. So we don't need more people occupying space. We need more people becoming relevant on earth. What is your vision? Are you a copycat? Are you a photocopy? God never created anyone a photocopy. There is a special assignment meant for you. There is a divine purpose with, that made him bring you on earth. He spoke to Elijah and said, Before I formed thee, I knew thee and ordained thee and certified you to be a prophet on earth. Before I formed thee. How would Jeremiah know if he did not come close to God? Why are you wasting the good number of your early years? Time is going. How long ago was it when we said Happy New Month? How long ago was it when we said Happy New Year for 2019? Is it not obvious to you that time is going? And it's not waiting for you. What is your purpose? What is your dream? What is your assignment? Because let me tell you, your vision will determine your destination. Your assignment will determine your consignment. And your purpose will determine your pursuit. I take it again. Your vision will determine what? Your destination. Your assignment will determine what? Your consignment. And your purpose will determine your pursuit. My question for you today is, what is that vision you have? What is that divine assignment? What is that purpose? The Bible said about Adam, that when he created Adam, he put him in the garden and gave him assignment to do what? To keep and dress the garden. Every living thing God created, he created for a purpose. What is your own purpose? To eat Amala and a wedu. Eh? What is your purpose? To give birth to 11 children. A complete football team. What is your purpose? To be fighting in the compound. Lion of the tribe of the compound. What is your purpose? to wake up every morning, dress well, look nice, and be walking up and down. What is your purpose? How old are you? 
time is going on. Zero to thirty is the good morning of life. If you have entered thirty-one, you're already in good afternoon. No? And one thing about afternoon is that before you know what is happening, night has come. What did you do with your morning? Morning has gone for many, many of you looking at me. Time. Tick, tick, says the clock. Whatever you have to do, do it now. Make hay while the sun shines. Jesus speaking. In the book of John chapter um, 4, John chapter 9, verse 4. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is still day. For the night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as you are in the world, what are you? Are you sure? Because we have different kinds of light. Nokia touch light is a light. Candle light is a light though. All of them follow. Halogen is another kind of light. Even NEPAC low current. It's a kind of light. Have you seen that kind of NEPAC low current? There is light but you are not seeing anything. You could come and just go off the thing and just on your generator. At least let you know what the one you are doing. All light is not light. But the question is, which kind of light are you? Because you were born to be a light to this world. If you are not shining, it is your fault. It is not uncle's fault. Not the auntie in your village. It's not their responsibility. It is your duty to shine your light. The question is, are you living for? You have filled the soccer well of your landlord with poo poo. Live for a purpose. Every time you go and eat, morning, afternoon, night, eat, morning, afternoon, night, and then you'll be going to the toilet and filling the soccer well unnecessarily. Live for a purpose. Live for a reason. See, when you don't discover strategies to work on your vision, your vision becomes an illusion. That vision becomes what? An illusion because you're not working on it. You're not doing anything about it. What has God called you to do? See, listen to me. Whether you are big, whether you are small, whether you are fat, whether you are slim, whether you are fair or dark, God has given you a vision. What is your vision? What are you living for? If you must excel in the coming year, you must know your vision. Because if you don't know your vision, you don't have direction. And if you don't have direction, you don't arrive at the destination. It's simple. What are you living for? I always say that the reason why I fall down and I get back up is because I don't want the story of my life to be told shabbily. I don't want the story of my life to be told shabbily. I want this world to know that a woman like Ifoma is a pass through this earth and wounded the face of this earth. Wounded. A combination of wound and injury. If you write it in the exam, you fail. We must live to wound Jod this earth. Make a mark. Generations after will come and they will hear the story of you. How one man came and changed the face of the earth. How one woman came and changed the face of the earth. You must change something. May you never be comfortable living life ordinary. Our great God did not create you ordinary. He created you extraordinary. You were born 
for a time like this. And you must shine. I said you must shine. I said you must be relevant on this earth. That's vision. You may look at it as little, but inside that little vision, God has given capacity for you to make a reasonable mark on the earth. Men who are remembered, women who are remembered, are men and women who discovered their vision and worked on it. I believe you've been blessed by that word of enthronement that came your way. Suddenly in my heart, I believe that your life will never be the same again. In case you're out there, you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, quickly I would like you to chant this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you, I come to you, a sinner, a sinner, I confess, I confess, from today, from today, I receive you, I receive into you, into my life, into my life, as my Lord, as my Lord, my personal Savior, my personal Savior, never to sin again. Never sin again. Congratulations. Amen. You are now sanctified, blood bought, and anointed for exploits. Amen. I want to speak specially to those who listen to the word of God. I declare by the mercies of God yes. that every yoke of limitation in your life is broken. Amen. I speak that the land where you are will not deny you your treasure. Amen. I declare when it is your time to be blessed, it will not be negotiated. Amen. I decree by the mystery of the word of God, yes. may you have access to divine inheritance. Amen. I declare healing to your body. Amen. I declare fruitfulness to everybody's situation. Amen. Receive grace for financial empowerment. Amen. Go and excel. Amen. Subdue the land. Amen. Manifest dominion. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for watching the message of enthronement. And I believe that miracles are already happening in your life right Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook and on other social platforms. You can see the links scrolling on your screen right now. And the headquarters of the church is located at Zion Heritage and Miracle Ministries of Voice of Nigeria Way, Lugwe Airport Road, Abuja. And we have uh, so many other branches. The branches and their addresses will also be scrolling on your screens right now. So stay connected with us and remain lifted for life.